so the, the next is the flash this is annual issue five uh annual number five i should say uh written by uh mark wade and craig boldman uh with art by trevis carest this is uh a lot of annual for start. <laughs> it's like sixty pages. Uh, yeah, and it does feel like it's actually important going forward. I feel like some of the character stuff, where it leaves a couple of characters, may actually it's be a thing. Very unresolved. Yeah. at the end of this sixty pages. So I, I think uh, some of the details here may actually be relevant in future stories, uh, unless it was like, there was some other bit going on that this would somehow lead into, which is possible. It's, but it's possible. I suspect this is relevant because. I'm going to go out on a limb, because this is co-written by, by Wade and Baldwin. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Wade knew the ideas that he wanted set up, and it's like, okay, this is the beats I need it to take. And Baldwin got scripting duties. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the only reason Wade would have kind of bothered with that, you know, as opposed to just letting the annual do whatever for an issue and him not have to worry about it, uh, is, is because he's going to follow up on it later. Yeah, maybe he just was too busy to actually write the 60-page script. Well, That's you know, on, on top reasonable on top of the monthly book, and I assume he was probably doing another monthly book at the at the time as probably well. Probably two or three now, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, the story here is it's a rogues focused story, which is cool. Uh, we get to see it at the start with a trickster trying to rob a an armored car, whatever it is, and uh, Wally kind of stumbles into it. Uh, he's, he's out for his nightly jog, as he puts it, and runs into trickster. A trickster tries to get away, but you know. Uh, and unfortunately for Flash, though, uh, Weather Wizard shows up. And Weather Wizard, I didn't recognize immediately. It was obvious it was him because of what he was doing, but his costume is different from the Weather Wizard outfit that I'm used to from later. Uh, yeah. I, I'm so familiar with the one that's from the John's run onwards, but you know, it is what it is. And it sets up this jack in the box trap that Trickster's got. Uh, but, you know, Wally is left behind, but he's fine after a bit of time thawing yeah, just, out. Just frozen into mice. The, st- the standard Weather, weather Wizard shenanigans yeah so we get a lot of stuff here with chunk uh wally is sort of staying with him and kind of recuperating try to like get a, a tackle on things chunk's power of course is that he can kind of like swallow things like a black hole <laughs> essentially <laughs> and th- this uh this stuff is all pretty it's, it's all just kind of fun setup stuff it's kind of setting these things up uh th- th- there's some really weird humor here where there's like a vhs tape uh like with chunks like dreams on it or with his like desires on it i'm not gonna ask <laughs> it was it was very odd but it, it all kind of related to his powers uh and while he's sort of in the black hole and he has to come back out and it's this really weird little sequence uh and basically chunk's so thankful for wally sorting out his problems that he's going to treat him to a, a, a i think it was ribs he's going to take him for a, 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 it was ribs because it made me want ribs a new set of ribs uh, and and there's, there's nowhere i can get ribs right now for the most part though like that stuff just also had a fun setup with wally uh, and chunk because the the majority of the issue i would say is spent on the rogues themselves they, they get the the, the lion share of the screen time as it were uh the panel time might be more accurate and uh, we have to talk about yet another cold base villain to add to the list because the list is never ending golden gliders brought in shell blaine uh her, her current boyfriend because there's no captain cold right now captain cold is mia uh, but they all meet in a movie theater uh, to have a secret communication. Yeah, she's called them all there, um, but used Snart's you know code phrase. So they think they're meeting they're meeting cold, and and then it's like <clears throat> surprise, it's me. Yeah. So basically, she tells them about this diamond she wants to steal from the uh, the museum. It's got to have this big ex- exhibition in the next week. And they all kind of get excited by the prospect of being able to clear out the rest of the building because she, she wants to take the diamond for herself, but she's like, hey, we break in. You guys will cause cause a distraction for me. I'll cause a distraction for you. You get to ransack the rest of the building. Everyone's all happy. I do love the joke, though, that every single rogue actually goes there a night early. Yeah, because it's like, you know, the exhibit opens on Tuesday. That means lots of people, uh, so it'll be nice and easy. So, Tuesday. And they're all like, yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> the very next th- page, Monday. All of them <laughs> suiting up. Yeah, they literally will hold their hands in the air and yell Tuesday like they're at like a sports team, you know, doing a, yeah. doing a, a chant or whatever. Uh, but, you know, so uh, fun set up. And then, of course, they try and steal this diamond. And 
Wally ends up uh, getting kidnapped by Golden Glider and he gets essentially chained to this weird thing and his foot gets chained to the diamond although it turns out to not be the real diamond she kind of anticipated all this happening and and you know wanted the rogues to distract Wally and so we get a lot of Wally and the rogues like fighting and him sort of running with one leg because the other legs like literally got a ball and chain on it that's actually working on his super speed uh yeah, I was a little confused as to where the ball and chain kind of came from. I don't think they really set it up or explained where like, it came from. I was really confused because it was like he was fine, and then just the next panel, it was on his leg, and I'm like, what? What just happened? That actually really confused me when uh, I was reading the issue. I I went back and forth over like three pages, five times here, trying to figure it out. What do you mean it was fine? Then he had it on his leg. The when you first the first time you see him after he's been like kidnapped, he's got it on his leg. Uh, yeah, but like I thought it was something that happened there because he's not like around and then he's in the panel like he's been there and he's just sitting there with it on. I'm like, did something you know happen? It feels like I missed something here. Um, I mean, his introduction when they find those would be a little bit abrupt, but I mean, they did set up that he was like, k you know, kidnapped earlier on because no, like, because Chil Blaine showed up to the you know the apartment or whatever and and surprised them yeah yeah i'm not disputing any of that i just it felt weird to me i think it was the maybe it was the introduction that was throwing me i'm like where, where did this all come from all of a sudden he's just kind of there with it on and i felt like i was missing something yeah i mean they, they kind of just like use it mechanically because i actually did i appreciated how it actually ended up working because he has to hold the because the diamond's in this like ball that's say attached to the, the foot like thing that he's got and yeah. So he has to hold that, and even once he gets it off by like vibrating and or whatever, vibrating his foot on like something, some specific surface, he uh, he still like sort of has like a problem with his leg after that, where he'll land in his leg and it'll sort of hurt and he'll sort of buckle. Like it, it kind of plays into how he how the rest of the the fight and the chase goes for the rest of the issue. It does, yeah. Which I which I kind of liked. Uh, so there's a lot of this. Um, what did you think of the art? I I thought the art was mixed I, I feel like at times it was working in a 90s way and then there was other times where i could see like a little bit of grgr kind of sneaking out of the faces and i was kind of like Ugh. no i get that um I, I also thought it was mixed i thought at times it was really solid and then there were other points it seemed extremely heavy on the inks out of nowhere like for like four or five panels would just be suddenly super heavy on the inks and would just be really dark and scratchy we do um, it is worth mentioning there is two artists on this book so there's a good chance that my my liking of some art and not the other might just be simple as one artist is all right and the other was one's there not two artists i'm sure there was two artists no just one artist oh Unless you're right the credits pages no. played out really weirdly no you're right i just misremembered okay so that that's why it was more confusing to me here is is like uh, to be fair, I think I just saw there there were multiple inkers, which might actually explain it. Explain my problem. Um, yeah, yeah. There's three inkers, which that explains why some pages all of a sudden I felt were extremely heavy out of nowhere. Yeah, there was because it's right around the, the where he's, he's still got the ball and chain on, right? But he's 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 dealing with certain rogues. It's boomerang specifically uh, on page because uh, it's not the number at the bottom, thirty five of the issue. I think it's around here in the issue that I started to look at the faces and go, hmm, there's a little bit of John Romita Jr. <laughs> creeping out of these faces, and it wasn't there the whole issue. And I'm wondering... I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. If you look at, like, page 40 that's labelled uh, in, in the issue, yeah. that's one where I feel like the inks are suddenly really heavy and scratchy out of nowhere, um, really dark, and, I'm, yeah. and it, it, things like that where it's just like, huh, okay. So it could, it could be the anchor that's more doing that than it is the, uh, the pencils, given that I think... No, I think the first chunk of the issue looks fine. It looks, you know, of its time, but, it, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not particularly bad. Yeah, no, it's, it's all right. Uh, Isles tend to suffer because they, they uh, you know, they, they have... Uh, like, because you have regular artists on all the books, so the annuals tend to be like, who can we get for the annual? And sometimes you get lucky and they'll get, like, some superstar to do a one-off annual, but a lot of the time you, you tend to get a lot of the, the no-names or... The, the people who no, are just free. You, you can sometimes get lucky because, like you say, it's oh, we, we, it's just one issue. You say it's no commitment, so they can kind of get them in that way. Whereas more likely, it's who's not working and has something that, that we can, you know, have done pretty quickly. Uh, and you know, they kind of use their 
their floor roster. You know, not the people who are on a regular ongoing book, but just, okay, who have we got going that, that can fill in? Yeah, I do kind of love that uh, just before he gets the ball and chain thing off, <laughs> I think that's Boomerang's trying to saw off his leg so he can get the diamond. <laughs> Um, where am I looking? Uh, that's page 40. It's the one you... Uh, oh, page 40. Okay, we're still on that. S- set me to. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see he's it. He's trying to soft his leg. I-, I do kind of love that Glider's plan to distract the rogues is literally how you would distract the cat by putting something... Like, p- putting, like, the, 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 the... Whatever you want them attracted to, putting, like, a string on it, or in this case, a ball, <laughs> so they'll all chase the Flash. Because it's not just that they have to deal with the Flash because the Flash is trying to stop them. It's that they want the thing on his leg. So the whole thing is designed to keep the Flash away from Glider and Chillblain. Although she does kind of betray Chillblain as well because Chillblain is not... Just turns out to be an all-typical man. He's, what we're saying is he's no cold snap. He's no, he's no cold snap, yes. Uh, so, you know, Fl- Flash uh, makes, makes work of the rest of them. Whereas... Uh, in fact, the the diamond that was on his leg turned out to be a bomb. So there's a little segue here where he kind of runs out and gets a wheelchair from the hospital and flies it off into the uh, up a hill and out into the sky, so it'll blow up. But he comes back obviously for Chillblade and Glader, uh, and we get the reveal here of what's going on and the diamond that she was really after and what that diamond is. And I have to admit, I didn't see this coming. Uh, I was that's, generalist. That's that's funny because. I thought she actually mentioned Black Diamond when she was talking about stealing it, so it was in my head the whole time. I clearly didn't notice that, and therefore never even thought about the fact that this could be Eclipso related. Because <laughs> uh, when she shows up uh, during the fight when Flash is fighting Chillblade, and she's she's got her face is all kind of like you know different. I'm like, wait, was she someone else? And it wasn't until the next page that I sort of started to sort of piece together. Oh wait a minute, this is Eclipso shit. Because uh, the last time I saw Eclipso on Earth, it would have been Justice League versus Suicide Squad, because that was the last time. And continuity for you up. um uh I, I me and matt read him in justice league dark just a few months ago oh he was popping up in dark all right okay yes uh, but the last time i saw him was in and that and that was like the end of 2016 so uh it's been a while it's been a while since i've seen a clip so um, yeah that's fair but uh yeah so we get this big cliffhanger here where like a clip so it's kind of on the loose. Uh, you know, uh, Flash wants Chunk to help, wants Chunk to uh, use the black hole powers to <laughs> to get rid of it. And uh doesn't happen. just doesn't happen. No, and it's kind of an unsatisfying ending. For, for like a 60-page annual, I kind of expect a bit more closure than this yeah he kind of he, he, he walks off he's kind of pissed because wally stood him up for dinner basically uh but there's uh, maybe a sense that there's more to it than that like he's acting a little bit too upset like we can see there's a great little panel actually we can see the the, the face behind him it's almost like eclipse was already kind of controlling him or something's controlling him uh maybe, maybe this is like his dark because like, chunk used to be a villain and i'm wondering if that maybe rather than being entered with eclipse so this little shadowy figure behind him with his hand on his shoulder may actually be more to do with uh sort of his inner dark side or whatever uh it could well be yeah it could be i i, I haven't read any of the stuff with him previously before this to have much of a a basis to you know to figure that out on but i'm sure we'll find out as the run goes on because oh, i'm sure. sure this is going to come back in yeah uh so no super dark stuff so yeah yeah wally gets uh possessed by eclipso uh and again that's why the more john Romita junior looking pages because of all the lines uh especially on the chest i was getting a lot of Romita junior on the chest on that page uh, i can see that yeah but yeah and it ends on a little joke here where uh glider gets the uh the the, the, the can of nuts that has the jack-in-the-box on it just just sort of end is on a little joke but yeah it ends on this big cliffhanger where wally's been possessed by Eclipso. It's and, kind of a big deal. And that's it. So I was like, I was expecting this annual to be standalone and have a have an ending and and so on. And it didn't. It was like here, there's more story to to get to. And I think that's as part of why I don't. I don't want to say I dislike this issue, but I'm going to rate it lower than than I might have done. Mm-hmm. Is because with this amount of page count, oh, this is yo know, okay. Here's your your annual. Uh, if this was three issues of you know if if you broke this up into three different issues of a six issue arc i'd probably kind of be on board with everything that was happening you break it up a little bit differently here or there sure but i'd be into it um whereas as okay this is your entire issue it's it's this long the, the there's a there's this all this build going on with the with the rogues and and then 
about, I don't know, 10 pages before the end, it just goes, oh, by the way, Eclipso now. <laughs> it kind of really threw me. It's a pretty big, big thing, yeah. Um, I'm just looking ahead, because that, that's actually the last issue in the first trade. If you're getting the big, thick trades, uh, the Flash by Mark Wade trades, uh, we actually start off next ish, uh, next trade with an issue of Green Lantern. Okay, it's a good job you mentioned that, because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would not have known. And I assume it's because Green Lantern and Flash cross over with this Eclipso stuff, but actually, no, uh, it says uh, Guerrilla Warfare Part 1 of 4. It's uh, Grodd-related stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll get back to Eclipso at some point. I mean, I mean it, 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 it's it, it, worth noting, this annual... In terms of its release schedule, actually came out between the two issues of that last yeah. like, two-parter. Well, what's interesting, it's not the first time, because if you remember Flash War just from the last couple of years, like that set up Flash War and then Flash War didn't start for like four months. So it's not entirely yeah. like unexpected if this, this sets up a story doesn't actually start getting addressed until like issue 75 or something like that. Yeah, it's not even a thing that's just of its time because this is still happening yeah so notably here uh we have green lantern 30 next and then flash 69 and green lantern 31 and then it's back to the flash for quite a while but there is a green arrow uh, sorry a green lantern issue 40 which comes in much later in this trade so there's a couple of green lanterns in here i hope it's on dc universe <laughs> i'm sure it will be uh are the, the the writer's unfortunate though uh who's doing the other parts of this crossover Oh, is it that that Green Lantern period? Yeah, that Green Lantern period. So it's right at that that time period, isn't it? So uh, that's a shame. But if they're relevant to the story going on, then we'll just have to, uh, you know, go on with it, suffer through it. Uh, especially since this, uh, at least this next story feels like a, a straight up crossover between the two books. So sounds a lot like it. Yeah. Well, I mean, part one of four does sound pretty conclusive. So. Yeah, so as worth mentioning, next Flash issue will technically be Green Lantern issue 30, which I know sounds weird, but that's the next thing in the, the Mark Wade Flash run.